Thank you all for being here today evening. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, MASA is having their annual uh, program after three years. We have fixed it up for Saturday, the 20th of January. Uh, there are a few dedications that we are yet working with. So none of these speakers have completely committed to being there. But in another week's time, we would, we would have the details and we would put it out on the social media. Uh, welcome all of you. And today we have Avnish Tiwari from At Architecture, Mumbai. Welcome, Avnish. At Architecture is a Mumbai-based practice founded in 2014 by Avnish Tiwari and Neha Rane, encompassing architecture, landscape, and urban design. The firm focuses on providing comprehensive solutions that strive for delight, sustainability, and efficiency. At Architecture, projects are predominantly in the public domain, and community involvement in, is a crucial aspect of their process from program development and design solutions to functionality and operation. Recently completed projects including, include the Northeast Pavilion and commemorative gate for the Surajkun Craft Mela in south of New Delhi, the jackfruit processing plant in Garo Hills, Meghalaya for a farmer's cooperative, and the urban regeneration project along the Brahmaputra River in Gauhati, Assam. Since 2014, At Architecture has won plenty of accolades and awards. To list a few, I would just go randomly. Uh, in 2023, they've been awarded in the UK. I, At Architecture has been shortlisted for the Architectural Review Emerging Awards. Uh, in 2018, winner Cambodia, Affordable Housing, Design Challenge 2018, United Nations Development Program, Cambodia. 2017, winner Switzerland, Home for Marginalized Children, Thane, India. La Forge, Holkheim Awards Gold 2017, Asia Pacific. I'd read a small bio of Avnish. The practice is both with Avnish and Neha Rane. Avnish Tiwari is an architect, designer, and educator who studied at Sir JJ College of Architecture, Mumbai. Avnish has presented his works at various academic events, including the London Architecture Festival. He has been a guest lecturer at the University of Toronto and at the Harvard GSD. He founded at Architecture in 2014 after working as an associate architect at Matharu Associates in Ahmedabad. Neha. Rane graduated with a bachelor's in architecture from Sir JJ College of Architecture, Mumbai. She further specialized in architecture for landscape at an intensive workshop at Yakademi Bologna, Italy in 2019 on a full scholarship. She's worked with reputed firms like Vastu Shilpa Consultancy under the guidance of Professor B.V. Joshi and HCP, where she worked on institutional hospitality and housing projects. She currently heads her co-founded practice at Architecture. So welcome, Avnish. Thanks, thanks Anand for the introduction. So this is our workplace, adapted from a century old bungalow in Mumbai. We are a studio that works in the fields of architecture, urban design and landscape. So as a new practice in Mumbai, we began our journey by honing our skills through international competitions. Some of these projects are highlighted over here. The Conversing Courts is a, was a two-stage housing competition in Russia. Home for Marginalized Children is a tiny intervention in slums of Thane, which we sent for wholesale awards in 2017. The Floating Pedestal is a music co concert hall in Lithuania. Vantage Route is a urban regeneration in USA and so on. So the knowledge and capital gained through this process has helped us value unique context programs and collective social process of architecture. Home Within House is our winning entry for the project in Cambodia for UNDP. The 
the key requirements for the project were affordability and security for textile workers with two thirds of them being women mi migrants. The project is a part of Nompen SEZ and is being built uh, by the local NGO called Building Trust International. I'll briefly explain the design development. So each apartment is a part of a cluster with alternating voids and solids, ensuring that each of these 3,000 units has courtyards on opposite sides. The utility courtyard contains a kitchen garden and semi-open veranda that serves as an extension to entrance vestibule, just like the chawls in Mumbai, which was also a solution for textile mill workers in the early 1900s. The concept of the kitchen garden was also inspired by the domestic practices we observed during our visit to the country. The other side of the apartment has a green open space that serves. There's some problem with the laptop here. Sorry. Has a green open space that serves as a community courtyard. Living spaces and bedrooms open onto this side. The compact form of residential modules and the interconnected circulation routes on ground and first floor make the project easily accessible and interactive. The project integrates semi-open collective facilities such as shops, bike parking, crash at the end of each cluster, creating an inclusive environment. The isometric view. So larger recreational and playground areas are incorporated in the project for mass gatherings. The market is proposed along the river Ghat. Each apartment has been designed to meet the user's requirement and imperative details in minimal format. Most of the spaces in the project is either shared uh, uh, functionally or visually, making it space efficient. The layout of the house is kept very simple with no permanent partitions or offsets in the rectangular plan, ensuring flexibility and efficiency of the space. The project is cost effective as it requires very few necessary components for construction. The construction materials used are composite of clay bricks and concrete. In home within house, the integration of living spaces and communal spaces creates a sense of belonging for the workers within a wider community. Child at Home project we did together with Gurji during the COVID lockdown months. We came second in this competition. UNESCO is working to revive the city of Mosul that was bombed by ISIS. The project includes the renovation of Mosul Mosque and construction of two new schools. For this project in Iraq, which has seen its fair share of conflict over years, we thought that architects should just be a facilitator in the slow process of rebuilding. We followed the traces left in the city so that the new schools and the mosque complex become an indistinguishable part of the city. Let's take a look at the design derivation. So we start with the figure and ground, highlighting the remaining buildings on the site. Extracting footprints. So this is this is this was the prayer hall, main prayer hall. There is a minaret here, and few ancient structures which connect the prayer hall with the minaret, and some of the remaining houses and some green pockets. So the streets we started with extending the streets into the site and dissolving the boundaries. Here's the intervention. So former structures with organic character are given new functions. Former open courtyards transformed into walled gardens. The vegetation is also being restored. Here you can, you can see a detailed floor plan and elevation of the school illustrating the integration into the context. In contrast, the winner of the first prize proposed a modern building which looked like a hotel in Dubai.
we recently read in the news that unesco found footings of earlier buildings while uh, during the excavation of the construction and now they are urging winners to modify their design and follow the existing ancient footprints the inner courtyard of the school as a continuous extension of the street i'll share another incident so during the wholesome awards in venice uh, we were sitting with a bunch of architects from different continents and uh, one of them mentioned this project as uh, as the exhibition as the as the winning entries were also exhibited at the biennale and interestingly they all said that second prize winning entry deserved to be built because of because it was very contextual etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, it was very fascinating for us we were like yeah i cannot agree more so along with the projects uh, i'm also uh, showing the the philosophy that we have been following throughout the practice the next project is north east pavilion it's an exhibition gallery it is a part of suraj kun craft fair 2023 which commemorates eight northeastern states of india the mela concluded last february the site is known for you cannot read anything in the drawing the the site is known for its historic suraj kund lake which was commissioned in 10th century by tomar dynasty today the lake is inactive but is known for the suraj kund craft mela an annual fair in faridabad that promotes indian handicrafts and provides a platform for artisans the fair is organized by haryana tourism department and attracts more than a million visitors during three week exhibition each year a theme is selected at the suraj kund craft fair usually featuring scaled down replicas of state monuments here you can see the replica of char minar which honored telangana last year deviating from the tradition we developed a program around a permanent pavilion involving research special engagement and practical functionality the architecture of the pavilion celebrates bamboo construction common in the northeast of india the scale model communicated the concept and the dimensions to skilled bamboo craftsmen while they while we developed the design and construction details together on site the pavilion commemorates ethnic diversity and indigenous crafts of the region here are here is the artist from meghalaya with local loom the monolithic bamboo also provides a neutral backdrop for the vibrant fabric of unique tribes the pavilion is a simple rectangle in plan with entrance and exit designed to allow visitors to move in one direction the image on the left shows the structure with its context so it consists of eight intersecting circles representing each state and displays their indigenous looms on the left we see lake suraj kund lake the geometry of galleries is inspired from the lake footprint hence only a segment of circle are used maintaining the rectangular peri outer periphery During our trips to northeastern villages we noticed that most of the households have a loom and wear homemade fabrics this we found very inspiring since we were also responsible for curating the exhibition we decided to exclusively feature domestic looms and their workings the three courtyards serve to encircle large trees found on site preserving the natural landscape This is the first glimpse of the building you get as as you approach the site. Another condition where a tree intersects with the pavilion skin. It is it is interesting to see how the organic landscape fuses with the geometric man-made pavilion. The integration of trees and formation of all courtyards was mostly planned on site uh, with the with the workers. 
The open to sky Meghalaya court features water pool reflecting the rainiest landscape in the world. The permeable bamboo structure absorbs the surrounding nature in many diverse ways. And the inclusion of nature also means wild animals. Circulation is planned as natural extension of the fair to encourage interactions. The galleries are semi-open in character, inspired from their household workplaces. The image also emphasizes the woven character of the structure. The lightness of the structure is balanced by volumes of space lattices. Another image highlighting meandering path here. Overview of the pavilion, let's, let's take a look at the form derivation and enclosure. Starting from 4.5 meter high regular cuboid with straight posts and purlins. The heights of three corners are raised or lowered and the roof of the pavilion is undulated to create a hyperbolic paraboloid. Just like in this diagram, uh, we did the demarcation on site for the contractors. So the, these sloping lines became the benchmark and this is how the entire pavilion was built. Inspired by the hilly topography of the region, the sloping roof create unique elevations and defined entrances and exits. This is the northeast facade and main entrance uh, of the pavilion with a sloping uh, slope ranging from 1.5 meter to 7 meters. Eight cylindrical galleries cut through the sloping roof at different heights. creating each gallery with unique scale and proportions. Some more details of the space lattice and the, and the filtering sun. Some evening shots. All the lampshades are suspended at the same height, which also became a reference line and emphasized the undulating roof even more. The open character and lantern-like structure blurs boundaries reflecting the spirit of the festival and skills of the craftsmen. An additional intervention at the craft fair was a commemorative gate that welcomes visitors and becomes a framework to local residents. Here an incomplete vault scooped out from a space lattice evokes a sense of enclosure while encouraging visual interactions. Some under construction shots. Both these projects were designed and built in record time of two months. This included sourcing the material bamboo from Assam and 60 craftsmen traveling to the site. The elevation, these drawings are only for representation uh, because uh, the, the workers there couldn't read working drawings. It was, but it was fun for our office uh, uh, to, to supervise the entire construction on the site and work hands on with them. Some, some bam bamboo joinery details. We tried to emphasize volumetric lightness through both these bamboo structures. This is a government funded jackfruit processing unit in Garo Hills, Meghalaya. In the Garo Hills, around 100,000 metric tons of jackfruits are wasted each season due to lack of infrastructure. The project aims to reduce this wastage of ripe jackfruit by processing them into value added products. The project is carried out by a cooperative of 50 farmers and aims to create 200 new jobs, increase the income of over 4,000 farmers, 60% of whom are women. The site is located in the remote Garo Hills, a, a marginalized area in Meghalaya, making accessibility very difficult. It is a two-day drive from the nearest airport to the site. The road conditions are also very poor. 
on our first visit, our SUV got stuck halfway and we had to be given a lift by local 4x4 van. So this is the story of my first visit and last week I visited again. The roads were proper before I reached but the day I reached it rained and again we had to take a lift uh, with a local 4x4 van. So same situation. So the, the makeshift bridge you see here is right next to our site. The original bridge was washed away in the last monsoon uh, which is a major seasonal disaster here. Communication was another major hurdle. It turned out to be expensive even to conduct the site survey and the line out of the building was done uh, uh, physically by our office uh, using hit and trial method. We took a help of Google Earth. Fortunately, the contractor was skilled and a very quick learner. Uh, it was fascinating, fascinating to see how he used this, his ID card for quick plumb when he was out of tools. This is the overview of the site. The site is located in the valley bottom. Locally, the only skill was RCC construction, who we used for the plinth and the, and the footings and for the overall supervision. And no other, no sources of any other material was available. So the biggest challenge was to build faster, cheaper, while making minimal use of local resources. This is the site and the approach road. We used a natural axis for footprint following cardinal directions with smaller east and west. The plinth is elevated above the ground and aligned with the road level, leaving the floodplain undisturbed. The circulation is planned in such a way that goods and staff movements are separated from each other. This we will see in detail uh, in the coming slides. Cross ventilation and natural light is allowed by the form of the building itself. To keep the construction cost low, the superstructure is made of steel, which is the cheapest to transport. The steel also makes the building lighter and more economical, while the prefabrication allows for faster construction and e faster and easier construction in remote locations. So everything seems under control so far, but our biggest challenge was to find a team of fabricators as there was simply no one willing to, to, to go to this difficult place and work. So after several months, we were able to convince the steel fabricator from Mumbai uh, to travel and build the structure. He has been working with us for over 10 years now and deserves a special recognition for this project. He worked with minimal resources and was supervised by us mostly through WhatsApp. We, we started with the, uh, with the scale model which made it easier to visualize the, the form and the joinery details and it also helped us uh, to guide the locals and take their help for the erection of the building. The building is not only cost effective, but also resilient and earthquake resistant, making it safe place for the community in times of disaster. So these are some of the process shots. So the project is designed to be durable and more efficient with the emphasis on longevity and performances. The, the four wings of the building, accommodate the processing of goods, staff recreation, admin block, and community hall. The, the, the raw material is moved in from one side processed in the central uh, plant. So this becomes the entry, the plant where the goods are processed. This is the exit and this is the storage area. While the staff enters from here, this becomes the access for the community hall as well. Some of the shots of the, the entrances.
In this section, let's see some of the passive sustainability features. So the north light, passive cooling due to stack effect, rainwater harvesting, and cross ventilation. The community hall opens up to the village fields. You, you can see it on the, on the upper section and strengthens the sense of community among the residents as ethnic and cultural gatherings are crucial for the, for the local tribes here. The main processing area. This slim footprint and orientation allow for minimal heat gain with the double skin construction allowing for thermal insulation as well as offset free interior surfaces. Uh, at the, at the beginning of this project, I happened to discuss this project with Rajesh Ranganathan and he gave some very important tips. So one of those tips were this, uh, like avoiding any offsets inside to, to avoid contamination risk and also the washability of the floor. So we were able to integrate these two important features. The polycarbonate sheets form lightweight and maintenance free facade. The deep verandas shade the openings and protect them from sun and rain. We tried to make the form legible with defined side views framed in cardinal directions. The idea of using primary color for structure emerged on site itself. The hardship of our first journey did not end at the makeshift bridge. So, after, after managing a transport while driving, we unintentionally went past and drove additional 25 kilometers uphill and had to wait for another help to return. So we thought, we, we were, uh, uh, we decided that we'll have to have something, you know, which becomes like a landmark or a reference for the, for the community. The project serves as a landmark and prototype finally, giving the community a sense of identity and reflecting its commitment to sustainable development. The model is designed to be easily replicated for similar programs. Some, some of the other shots. So in our ongoing projects, we continue to strive for delight, simplicity, and efficiency. Padampukhri is the public park as along the Brahmaputra River in Guwahati. The project rejuvenates a natural lily pond, creates a new river edge, and connects the site with the adjacent history museum and the revival of native flora and fauna. The larger piece of land between, between the lake and the river is transformed to create curvilinear plazas for variety of activities and recreational spaces for tourists and residents. The layout closely follows the natural topography of the site. Construction is limited to circulation routes and the step pavilions maximize access to the waters and the landscape, encouraging public interaction. Even, even the steps follow gently the natural contour. Padampukri basically means a lily pond in, in Assamese language. Planting has just begun and it will take one or two more monsoon seasons to, to properly flourish. Around, so in 300,000 square feet of planting of areas and shrubs revives native species and attracts uh, local fauna with the botanical garden imagined as, a, as an open gallery. The cascading paved terraces interweave like finger joints uh, with, the, with the natural riparian vegetation, increasing biomass with the combination of gabions and recharge pits enriching the soil. The, the difference in height uh, from uh, between the park and the high water mark was more than 10 meters. So with the help of these cascading terraces, we were able to bring people very close to the water. The proposal aims to improve the mobility of pedestrian cyclists and motorists and creates an open breathing space 
in a densely populated neighborhood. Some, some of the evening shots. The lighting is minimal and follows color temperature under 2700 Kelvin. We actually tried for sodium vapor, but it, it is no more in production, I, I have understood. We are currently also working on a church in Manipur for indigenous tribes in Himalayan mountains. View of the site, a community has, has started uh, collecting materials. This stone is lying there for more than six months and now they have started working on uh, procuring wood also. Local buildings are mostly in wood here. This is the picture of the of the post office near the site. We are working very closely with the community to build the structure entirely from local wood using traditional technology. The site. So we have used A-shaped uh, roof frames that view the valley, the, the reserve forest, village, woods, and the existing old church, which creates the footprint of the, of the church. So at the intersection of those two angles, we have created a, a open public space for, for children to run schools or crash. On the, on the left hand side, you can see the veranda and the courtyard, which becomes the public area, which will be open throughout 24 seven for the, for the community. This is the view of the aisle. So models play a very important role uh, in our projects from developing the design uh, to communicating the ideas and the details to the users and the makers. Manjunath is helping us with the structure design of the project. Uh, we are very fortunate to have mentors like Gurjit, Rajesh, Aip, Manjunath, Sridharan, who constantly support and guide us. This is the last slide. So at, at architecture, we basically try to design that is easy to understand, uses clear geometric shapes, and evokes positive emotions. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And thanks, Masa, for having me. It's, it's, the, the concept is really interesting, and I feel it's very honest like uh, uh, having people uh, every month and uh, speaking and uh, presenting their works. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Questions, please. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll ask one. Uh, uh, yes, uh, very nice presentation. Just wanted to understand uh, when you're working on uh, such a, uh, a not from your own city and then like no practices at Mumbai and then working in uh, Meghalaya, Manipur. So how do you manage uh, your, uh, where do you stop your uh, design process and then when you plan to go to a site and then explore uh, uh, materials and then like, no, who is going to be a contractor? So how is that happens? And then what are the challenges uh, you do face? Yeah. Of course, it is, it is not very easy, uh, but uh, the, the central uh, place, central city in Northeast is Guwahati. So every time if you want to visit any one place, generally you will have to go via Guwahati. So, for last one and a half years, we have been having some work. This riverfront was also a very big project. So what we have started, we have started combining and uh, visiting all the sites and meeting, having all the meetings, everything together. So that is one way to make it a little more efficient. But I think if you have a good contractor and if you have a, a maker who can understand uh, your ideas, even if they don't read the working drawings uh, in detail, they can actually show the work 
uh, via uh, video call or something or they can share photos and we we uh, give them feedback so remotely i think we are, we are able to uh, manage it pretty well we were really fortunate i told uh, even in the presentation i mentioned that we had a very good contractor in in both the both the projects uh for for suraj kund i think uh, there was no one there was no supervisor or no good contractor no who could understand so but that was not very uh, difficult to access so either i or neha we were mostly there on site and one and a half or two months we were we were mostly there on site and got the work done also in in suraj kund i would i would like to mention there we actually experimented with something something little different but the the makers the people who came they were very proficient with the bamboo construction so we we made a contemporary building using the local te traditional technology whereas in meghalaya we knew that it was very difficult it would be very difficult to supervise everything and if if we had to uh, try any experimentation it would have been very difficult so there we we only came up with a very neat working functional plan functional section and we just got it executed and that's the reason why why you see the building is very simple straight and most of the work is prefabricated so in the city we were able to uh, supervise the 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 prefabrication which was delivered and just uh, assembled on the site so that is how we resolved the meghalaya project anybody else Hi sir. Uh, so, if you could elaborate more on how do you work with this indigenous community? What's the approach that you take to get these designs, or how that process is? If you could elaborate that. So, I think uh, more than more than uh, explaining them or teaching them, I think we are learning from indigenous culture, and every visit actually. Uh, 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 uh become an exploration no to something something very beautiful something very very uh, indigenous something which is totally embedded in their culture so what we are trying to do is it first of all it is not very easy to directly communicate with with the with the indigenous tribes for example in this manipur but there are there are all of these projects there have been few people few uh, uh members no who became like a point of contact so once you are comfortable once the once the tribe is comfortable once the once the community is comfortable then they open up and then they share everything so for example this manipur church the the head of the the village he can he can speak in english he can uh, he he can read drawings uh, interestingly so we are we are always in touch on whatsapp uh, we have zoom call video call so i think it is it is not as difficult as it sounds at least at least the communication part any further questions one small question rather crude in fact for a practice which is 8 9 years old to dabble in competitions and take on projects where sometimes you're not very sure that you'll get these jobs how do you sustain <laughs> very valid question no i think we are struggling like it's it's not very easy the kind of practice that we are operating uh, uh, sitting in mumbai it it has been very difficult but as i told no like i have so many uh, friends and supporters no who who have been encouraging us and uh, through this difficult phase once in a while no we we were able to you know crack some very big competition which has financially also helped us to sustain for some time yeah but so all of these community projects we are just doing it out of our passion and interest we we are we are not making anything but we look forward like we hope that it will pay off some day <laughs> in the future quite quite tough to yeah continuously be on this competition and uh, how do you say idea mode and not worry about how does one sustain a practice especially in a practice in mumbai <laughs> yeah and even participating in competitions is is i think it should be I, i must say that it is one of the most difficult part for any architect's career and architect's life because you never know 
uh, before we won our first big competition in Cambodia, we must have participated in over 60, 50, 60 competitions. We have, we kept doing and uh, there was a point where we thought like we, we, we really don't uh, stand any chance and we should just quit. But uh, it happened so, but it's, it's not very easy and it, it takes a lot of investment, not only uh, in terms of your time, but the investment in terms of your stress. It's, it's very, it's, it's very stressful to participate in a competition, make it through time, uh, uh, in time and also deliver which is so competitive and uh, which will be which will be com uh, which will be judged in front of some some uh, big guns no all over the world so it's 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 difficult but i think it has it has also helped us no uh, to to uh, develop our craft so i think we are we are more confident just because we have done so many competitions it has it has helped us uh, in that way a lot anybody else Thank you, Avnish, thank for this wonderful presentation. Uh, on behalf of Masa, we thank you for having been here today. I would request uh, Professor Bindu Madhav to just come up the stage, please, and help us with the presentation. Thank you, thank you all for being here today. Thank you.